Hi, welcome back to Bohemia. In today's video, we're going to look at our new hot water system. Now, when we moved into Bohemia, the hot water was not great. In fact, it didn't work at all. Um, there's an old um, hot water cylinder upstairs um, and it had an immersion heater on, didn't work, there was no hot water. We temporarily managed to get it to work just by changing the immersion heater, but the hot water was really low pressure and it didn't supply the shower. There was a separate like Myra shower um, instantaneous heater, which was, to be fair, pathetic. Um, now, in our old house, we had a um, hot, proper hot water cylinder and a Stuart Turner monsoon three bar pump. So we are used to having really nice, powerful showers. The only downside of that is when you run the shower, the pump makes a bit of noise. Other than that, it was a great system. We had gravity fed um, water from the loft and we had the pump pump both hot and cold separately into the shower. It was great. So we're used to power showers. We really wanted a power shower here at Bohemia. So we looked at different ways of achieving that. So if you saw my previous video, you'll know that we now have mains pressure water into the house, no longer have a gravity fed system. So we had to come up with a new way of supplying the hot water. Um, and we really wanted to get rid of that old Myra wall mounted uh, instantaneous heater. So what we decided to do in the end is to get a Sunamp. Okay, Sunamp heat battery. Um, I'm gonna run through what the Sunamp does, how it works, why we chose it and um, give you a little demonstration of the amount of pressure you get at full hot water and cold water into our new shower. So basically we wanted a way of having hot water storage and we wanted water at mains pressure or at least borehole pressure in our case, three to four bar. So this is it down here under the counter here and um, really I'm gonna put it to the test and see if we can get full mains pressure, three, four bar pressure piping hot water to the shower. So how does this work? Well, it doesn't store hot water, and this is the key thing. It doesn't store hot water, it heats water directly. But what it does do is it stores heat. And inside this, there's a material called a phase change material. And basically, it does heat it up. Um, it heats it up, but as it heats it up, the material inside here changes from a solid to a liquid and across that phase change it stores a hell of a lot of heat a lot more heat than you would get in the equivalent space just heating the water so um, this particular unit is the Sunamp Thermino what is it 210 EPV which means it's designed to use with a solar system and a solar diverter um, it stores the equivalent amount of 210 liters of piping hot water. So you'd be talking about a storage um, cylinder sort of this high. Um, we've got it here under the counter, as I said earlier. I did have to raise this countertop up just a little bit to maintain an air gap underneath. You're supposed to have a bigger air gap than we've got all the way around, but it seems to work quite well. Now, the first thing I notice is even when it's fully charged up and it's heated up to its full capacity, the walls of it feel really cool. So there's very little heat escaping. It's very efficient at maintaining the heat. Um, that feels almost cold to the touch, sort of room temperature, even though it's um, charged up and uh, heated up inside. There's thick insulation, um, thicker than you would get with a normal hot water cylinder. So in terms of its efficiency, it's really good. You can heat this up overnight using off-peak electricity, the same way you would with a with a store uh, with a with a. a a normal cylinder um, or you can use solar power or um, other means to heat it up this one's uses solar you can get ones which you can indirectly heat using hot water from your heat pump or from your boil your gas boiler whichever you've got yeah but obviously for our system we wanted to be super efficient we want to wanted to be able to use solar power and off-peak electricity and that's what we've got i'll talk on another video about the eddy solar um, diverter that you can see behind there. Um, we'll do another video about that, but let's just focus in on the Sunamp. Now, I'm going to show you just what you get on the side. Um, on the side of the Sunamp here, you can see there's a few LEDs. Now, it doesn't give a great amount of information. There's power and there's a sort of indication there of what state the uh, the, the 
the heat battery is in, how full it is. Now I have to say, it's not brilliant. It's a couple of LEDs. One LED starts flashing, then it goes solid. Then the other one starts flashing, then it goes solid. And the more often it's flashing, it obviously indicates more power is in the unit. But it's not a great indication and it's not always accurate. So one thing I would say about this is it's difficult to tell exactly how full it is and when you might need to boost it. But other than that, it's... um. It's pretty good, it's simple, there's not a lot to go wrong. You just plumb in a inlet and an outlet um, and an electricity supply. So I'm just gonna grab my little camera and we'll just show you some of the plumbing that I've put in to make it work. Um, not too complicated, um, let's just do that now. So first of all, I'll just show you that there's these four black circles and these are actually holes for the inlet and outlet pipes. There's three sets of holes on three sides of the SUNAMP. So depending which way around you wanna mount the whole thing, you can have your pipes coming out the back or either side. Now you can see how I've plumbed this in. Basically there's a cold water inlet and there's a hot water outlet. But then you have to have this tempering valve underneath, which I've just mounted there for easy access. And that's because there's no actual temperature thermostat inside the SUNAMP, it just comes out really hot. I don't know exactly how hot, I assume about 70 degrees. And you have to have this so you don't have water going too hot into your taps, yeah. And obviously you can just set this to the temperature that you want as you would your thermostat on your hot water tank. So also we've got the um, the pressure regulating vessel down there and a little bit of uh, pipe work just going up into the rest of the house. So it's quite simple to connect inlet and outlet and a main supply and if I just come up here you can see I've got a little main supply switch double pole switch next to the uh, the eddy I'll talk more about the eddy in another video um, you will need a dedicated supply from your fuse board to your SUNAMP so that's great and it's very space saving and it all works really nicely now the real test is how much pressure is there at full heat. So let's go into the bathroom and uh, we'll have a look at the power shower and we'll see how it's working and see what uh, power we get and what pressure we get without hot water. Also I want to see what happens if someone flushes a loo or runs a tap while you're taking a shower. We know from experience with combi boilers that that's not always great. We don't want it going cold do we halfway through the shower. So I'm in the bathroom and the first thing I want to do is to give you an idea of what the pressure is like coming out of our taps, yeah, and then we can move over to the shower and see how that, uh, that works, especially when there's a, like a tap running or flushing the loo. So the taps, let's just run the cold water tap first and uh, you'll see how much pressure there is. So you can see there's quite a lot of pressure now. I'm going to run the hot tap. This is obviously coming through the SUNAMP. And you should see that there's an equivalent amount of uh, pressure there. I put my hand underneath it. Just takes a few seconds for the water to get through. Oh wow. That is really hot. That's the temperature I set on the Oh, That is almost too hot to keep my hand under. And you can see what sort of pressure we're getting on the hot water. So that's brilliant. So that removes any fears I have about the SUNAMP being capable of supplying piping hot water at full mains pressure, or in our case, three to four bar pressure. So let's just go over to the shower and then we'll see how that's affected by other things like taps running and so on when the shower is running. So at the moment, until we get our new bathroom built and installed, we're got the old shower over the bath here in the old bathroom of the house. And uh, we've put in a mixer valve and we've put it, I'll just move this screen out of the way so we can get to it. We've put in a basic um, thermostatic mixer valve down here with a diverter and we've got an overhead shower and we've also got a hand uh, shower head as well on the wall which we can divert. We never use it to fill up the bath. We don't take baths in this house, just showers. Okay, so let's turn it on and we'll see what kind of uh, temperature we can get and what kind of pressure we get from that overhead shower first. So let's hope I don't splash it everywhere. So it's a really nice pressure. I would say, it's a, if you can hear me, it's equivalent to our three bar power shower that we had before. 
oh it's nice and warm I've actually got the temperature set to 34 degrees at the moment but let's just turn that up I'm going to turn it right up to 42 which is probably hotter than we'd ever want it and yes it's hot and it's good pressure now I don't know if you can judge this I'm going to flush the loo and see if it affects the uh, <laughs> loo's flushing it's still now the pressure's dropped a tiny bit just a fraction but it's still pretty powerful I'm going to turn this off there we go so flushing the loo is fine as we've discovered um, there's a limited amount of water that comes out the loo but what happens if we run a hot tap um, while the shower's going let's try that now I'm going to turn it back on I'm going to risk getting wet again and we'll turn it back on and then I'll run the hot tap and we'll just see what happens um, to the shower I'm going to put it on a more sensible temperature that we might have in actual daily life like 35 degrees something like that 35 36 degrees I'm going to switch it on again we'll let it run for a couple of seconds and then I'll switch on the hot tap and we'll see what happens so we start off with full pressure that's really good now I'm going to pull the hot tap on full now the hot tap on is on full the shower is a noticeably lower pressure but it's maintained its temperature still nice and warm and it's still pretty good so I'm not going to waste any more water I'm going to turn the tap off you can probably notice that that kicked back in again and then I'll turn that off so to sum up I would say that the Sunamp heat battery has exceeded my expectations I was a bit cynical that it would be able to supply mains pressure or even more than mains pressure like four bar pressure at full heat to a shower and a tap at the same time or having the loo flushed and I have to say it does we've got this amazing power shower um, we had some visitors uh, the other day and they said it's the best shower they've ever had really powerful nice and hot and um, yeah we found that we can have three or four quite long showers before the Sunamp empties out yeah and then we have to uh, boost it up but it's got a we've got a boost button on the eddy we can top it up during the day we can also use excess solar to keep that topped up as well and I have to say I'm really happy with it so I thoroughly recommend getting the Sunamp one thing I'll finally say before we uh, before we finish is that we were originally planning to put it upstairs in a direct replacement for the hot water cylinder that thing weighs 175 kilos and we just didn't want between me and my partner Stephen we didn't want to be lugging it up the stairs we were having to like get th the hoists and and machines in to get it up and we just thought no we'll put it in the kitchen and there it is in the kitchen and it looks great it's fine under the counter there and um, it works really well so uh, I think this is great technology British technology and um, I would thoroughly recommend if you want a replacement for a traditional hot water cylinder whether you're using solar whether you've got a heat pump or um, a gas uh, gas boiler or anything like that you can still use the Sunamp you just have to get the right model there are different models for different applications but it for us it works brilliantly and um, we are really happy with it so uh, thumbs up to the Sunamp the heat battery and um, do join us for our next video we're going to have another video later on of the eddy um, solar diverter um, which we uh, which comes from my energy of course and works really nice with the zappy we got the zappy for the for charge in the car yeah so uh, so those work really nicely together so do come back and uh, check out my next video please subscribe to the channel I need more subscribers please make sure you watch all the videos because I need more viewers um, and uh, that uh, really helps me out so subscribe comment below ask me any questions you like and I'll be happy to answer them in those comments so uh, yeah do take care and I'll see you soon bye